What's up, Internet? I'm back with another BattleBox video. As you can tell, I got on a mask. But it's not for coronavirus. Steve had Mexican food yesterday. And hooey, is it ever bad? Don't worry about me. I'm perfectly healthy. Got Mission 61 right here in front of me. And no, there's not any masks in this mission. A mask isn't really going to help you, although loads and loads of toilet paper will, apparently. So hopefully your bowel movements um, end well. I'm going to take this off now because I'm getting hot. That's what the beard's for anyway. Filtering out contaminants? Filtering out coronavirus. Everybody says you need to shave your beard off. Like, that ain't going to happen. <sighs> That's much better. I can breathe now. So like I said, I got Mission 61 right here in front of me. A lot of cool gear in here. Let's jump on into the box, shall we? <laughs> of course, I got my mission card here with the basic, advanced, pro, and pro plus levels. The values of the items in each box and the total value of each level. And on the back, Mission 61, we've got the write-up for you to get some more information about what's inside. So first and basic is these Calcutta sunglasses. Bimini is the model. These things are nice. I don't know if you've noticed, but I've been wearing sunglasses like this for quite some time uh, this past through out 2019 and into this year. I got lots of friends that have the expensive sunglasses, right? You know, they got the high dollar freaking sunglasses, three, four, five hundred dollar sunglasses, and they tear them up just like I do with a pair that's not as expensive. But what's good about these Calcuttas is, in my opinion, okay, in my opinion, they are just as good as them high dollar ones, okay? The polarized lenses on these work just as good as the polarized lenses on the others, okay? These have a plastic lens versus glass. I guess that's where a lot of the money comes from is wearing glass lenses versus plastic lenses. However, if you're like me, you tear up sunglasses over time. After about seven, eight months, it's time to get another pair. I can't do three or $400 every six, seven months. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Went into a store, got a set of cow cutters. Daniel was there too, got him a set when we were down at the beach. And man, we fell in love with them. So we got in touch with Calcutta, and now you got a pair. Check them out. In and there. It's so polarizing. Really, it's great. It's kind of like x-ray vision in the water. So if you like to fish and all that, these are great so that you can see into the water without the glare. But these have a really good amount of wraparound for your eyes for protection, anti-glare, the whole spectrum. And they got a cool skull and crossbones on the side. Comfortable, don't slip off your head. They stay right there. I got a little dizzy. I blacked out there for a second. But no, all jokes aside, these glasses right here are great. Daniel, I've been wearing them for a long time now. Um, this summer will be a year since we've really been exclusively wearing Calcutta. It's the only sunglasses that we're gonna wear simply because we're rough on our gear, okay? We throw our sunglasses down, you don't have to baby them. You don't, you know, it's, it's a $25, $99 value. If I tear the glasses up, I can get another pair and it's not gonna break the bank. And I feel like I got just a good quality set of glasses as them high dollar ones. So hopefully you like them. I know we do when we're riding four wheelers and everything. I mean, all the dust and grime and all the mud and crap we get on them, they seem to hold up really, really well. And they don't break the bank. That's the big part. So I'm gonna set those right here. If you got yourself a set of sunglasses, you gotta have the second thing that's in the box. Goes along with these here sunglasses. There's a retainer to go on them, right? Not to the kind of go in your mouth and keep your daggone teeth from shifting around. Although I guess you could probably wire this up into your face if you wanted to, but I wouldn't recommend it. So these are Calcutta brand retainers. So what's good about these is you can always have your sunglasses right here around your neck, right? So these just slide over the end of your sunglasses. Like so, sometimes a little spit helps, but I'm not gonna spit on this one. And it holds your glasses very well. So you can hang this up, you can wear it around your neck, you always got it on your head, and if something happens and it does happen to fly off, if you're looking down in the water or something like that, it's gonna catch on your neck and not go into the water or in the mud or whatever it is that you're doing. So great little thing to have here. And in a pinch, if you need something to tie down something with, if you need something to freaking tie something together, you can pop this off, you can tie something together. Get you out of a pinch, right? Improvise. That's your first two items in the basic. Put them together, because they go together, yeah. So the third item in basic is something that I use all the time, 
And when I don't use it, I pay the price, like I am right now, because I got this crap on my skin right now. This is an outdoor skin cleaner, or cleanser, as it says right here, for poison oak, poison ivy oils, poison sumac, any of that stuff. I'm highly allergic to it. If I look at it, I get it. So I actually got a huge bottle of this in my shower. Pretty much through the full four seasons here in Georgia, I have to use this stuff. Um, back home where I used to live, I only kind of used it spring into the late fall, but here I can still get poison even during the winter time. If you're not allergic to poison, there's more uses for this, okay? I'll go over that in a second. But this stuff right here works really good. So poison ivy oils can get on your clothes, get on your skin anyway, right? It can be on your dog, you can be petting your dog and get poison ivy on your skin. If you're allergic to it, it's a freaking hassle. This stuff right here helps wash those oils off completely. I typically do two washings. I'll wash with it full body, then I'll wash again, and then I'll start using whatever regular soaps that I use, typically grenade soap coat. I'm just saying, shameless plug. However, this stuff right here helps get those oils off of you, okay? Problem is, you might not get it on your skin, but when you take your clothes off, it's on your leg of your clothes, and then you just got it on your skin, and then you put, I mean, I got the crap right now. I got it right there. See that, oozing? I got it right there. It's starting to dry up, though. I got it right here on my wrist. I got some close to my nether region. I'm not gonna show that to you. However, this stuff right here <laughs> will help you no nether region. This stuff really helps to neutralize those oils. If I still get it, it typically isn't that bad. It's only a few little spots like I got now. It also helps dry it up. So if you already have a breakout, you continue to wash with this. It, it helps it even further to heal. And you can also put some of this in your clothes wash or anything like that. You can wash your dogs with it. You can wash whatever you want to with this stuff. It'll help break down those oils. It'll also help remove pine sap. So if you get pine sap all over your hands, this will help remove it. And skunk oil. If you get sprayed by a skunk, you can use this instead of taking an oatmeal bath. Oatmeal gets high dollar when you put it in a bathtub. I'm just saying. I got a friend who absolutely cannot get an allergic reaction we were putting up a deer stand one time and there was vines about that big around going up that deer stand. And I said, nope, we're gonna pick another spot. He said, I'll cut it down. I said, you're gonna be completely covered in poison ivy. He cut the vine out and it was oozing oil, okay? Wiped it on his hand and rubbed it all over his arms and his face. And I was like, you gonna be in the hospital by morning. He didn't have one single breakout. I never did hunt that deer stand. If you are like him, you still need this stuff handy because I'm sure you have a friend or a family member that gets allergic reactions to poison ivy. So if you don't get poison ivy, congratulations, because the crap freaking sucks. If you know somebody who does, you can help them out with this. Tech New, the only product that has ever helped me from having bad breakouts with poison ivy. If you've ever used this stuff for anything other than poison ivy or skunk or tree sap or whatever, comment down below in the comment section on what else this is great for. I've only used it for poison ivy and tree sap. I haven't had an encounter with a skunk yet, thank God. I've heard over time you can actually develop an allergy to poison if you haven't experienced it before. And really, in my opinion, if you're just like an alien like my friend is when it comes to poison ivy, you either don't get it or you don't get in the woods enough. Next up and last in the basic box is a weatherproof survival kit or storage box. You can do whatever you want with this thing. Daniel's kind of converted me. I've used like a, just a, a, a sealable like pelican case or whatever for quite some time for a fire box. And then he, he showed me his fire kit, which I'll show you here in a second. That's out of this box. I was like, you know what? That's, that's kind of nice, I kind of dig that. What we have is a compartmentalized box that you could organize whatever you want in it. Daniel uses his for a fire kit, so you can organize different types of fire starting materials or tools in here. You can use it as a fishing kit, you can use it as a medical kit, you can use it as a knife parts kit, you can use it as a makeup kit, and if you're into that, hopefully you're not, unless it's like camo paint or something to go deer hunting, you know, I just say, grow a beard, it's like the best face mask ever instead of you know, using a camo mask. Sections that you can pop open, they're spring loaded. This side here, you have these dividers. So if you got something long that won't fit, you can take the divider out. If you wanna say do a little knife kit where you got screws and stuff like that in there or O-rings or bearing pieces if you're into that, 
You can put those in there, fishing lures, hooks, weights. This other side here is sectioned off into two separate sections and it has already certain sized compartments so you can't adjust these but you can adjust this side right here. Snaps close that way when you're when you open it up and you just want to do something with something over here, you can open up that side and you ain't got to worry about the other parts falling out or dropping a piece in there and having to transfer it back. Just a really cool little box here. Has a nice little gasket around the sides there and a really big secure latch to close it up. So I'm going to show you Daniel's fire kit here in the mystery spot. I'm going to go ahead and put this guy, this dude over here like this. How about that? So this here is Daniel's fire kit. So he could pretty much start a fire with this thing. He's got a little bit of everything he's going to need to do that. So let's we'll see what he got over here. So he's got some different cotton tenders here. This one here has got a little bit, um, feels like it's got a lot more wax to it than these. These right here are a little little less waxy. He's got some strips here that are flammable. He's got some um, wafers here. Uh, those are probably the Dave Canterbury ones that he's cut up to fit. Because really you don't need the whole wafer. You can just use a part of it. He's got a pencil sharpener here so he can make tender. It's also made out of magnesium if you need to shave that down. He's got some more material here. Char cloth. He's got the um, replacement uh, striking pad from like the uh, Zippo matches right here stuck to the top so he can use that as a surface to strike. Of course he's got those matches right here so he can strike it. Got those in there. He's got some fat wood pieces, some jute twine, a guitar pick so he can start a fire with that if need be, a ranger band. You never know when you might need a ranger band. Some more cotton tender. It's got the tender tabs right here. And it's all right here in this compact little kit that he can rely on when he needs to start a fire. If you're not going to comment down below about this, how about go to our Facebook page, the BattleBox Facebook page, and when you get your kit here, send us in pictures of what you made with your box, what kind of kit you made. Interested in seeing that. It even balances on itself. Oh, God, I'm gonna tell you something, son. That right there. <laughs> That's your basic box, folks. So next in the advanced box, we got an Ulu knife from Lamson. The Lamson Ulu knife. Walnut handle, 420 high carbon steel, made in the USA. Yeehaw. Try to get in this thing without cutting myself. Here's your Ulu knife that comes with this. I guess they kind of dip that and then it dries, which is kind of kind of cool so you're not gonna be able to keep that it actually tears so you can take that off so you can see that gorgeous blade oh yeah got that new new got that new new oh yeah you gotta be careful with that thing the ulu knife has been around for a long time of course this is a modern version of it way 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 back when they used to use musk ox horn and caribou horn and all that for handles and use different types of stone and stuff to make the blade for this style of tool right here that was used a lot for skinning, for fleshing out um, animals so that they could use their skins, um, and for cooking, and maybe more so for cooking. Um, it is a great knife for fleshing out if you're trying to get the fat off of a hide or whatever. It is a great knife for that because you can scrape with it and you can cut with it. But it really excels at cutting for cooking purposes because of the rocking motion that you can use. You can put a lot of pressure behind it. It's almost like, like scissors with only one side of the scissor um, and works really good for cutting through bone as well. I feel like I'm in one of them cooking shows now. I'm just pulling all kind of stuff up out of the... So we got some carrots and taters. We got some celery right here. So it slices, it dices, it purees, it something else. <laughs> Ooh, nice. You just slide it on up in there. Be like them pros and just. <laughs> I was worried about my fingers. Right there, what's nice and thick, you just get it all rocking motion in there and she just cuts it right through. Taters, oh yeah, look at that right there. That's nice. You can do a little chopping like that right yonder with it if you want to, then you can do your rocking motion. French fries. 
make you some home fries like that right there. Mm, celery, all right? You want some celery? You just, oh, that's nice. Mm, you, mm. I think I like the noise just as much as the fact that it cuts through there like that. Nah. Look at that. That's nice, man. Yeah, baby. Just do it to it, right? I'm getting a little carried away. So again, we got a walnut handle, brass rivets, 420 HC, high carbon stainless steel. Um, not dishwasher safe because this wood hasn't been treated or hasn't, you know, had any oil or anything like that put on us. I probably wouldn't put it in a dishwasher, but you could wash it off, of course, and dry. Be sure to get the wood nice and dry after you wash it in the sink or in a creek or whatever. In a pinch, you can fashion all kind of other tools for bushcraft uses with this as well. Just be careful with it because that sun gun right there is sharp. Right there, yo. So now it's time for the Pro Box, and the Pro Box has got a very interesting electronical device in it. Electronical. I may have just made up another word. Electronic, same thing. I like electronical. We're gonna say electronical device. <laughs> it's the breadcrumb Bluetooth marker, and you get a 50% off coupon in case you want another one, right? This little rascal right here is pretty freaking slick. I don't know about you, but I've been on a lot of hunting trips with a lot of friends. One thing that this would be really cool to use as is a marker for hunting locations. So you got a buddy with you, you bring them on your property or on your lease, and you say, hey man, you go down to that big tree right there and then you hang a right and you go about 150 yards and you're gonna see a hole in the ground where a gopher's been. Don't go to the left, keep going straight. Keep going past the gopher and then once you get past the gopher, you're gonna see a tree that's got a little crook in it right there. When you see that tree, you need to turn 30 degrees and go about 120 yards this way and then you'll find the stand. I never found the freaking stand, okay? I just hunted at the gopher hole, didn't see nothing all day because it's just not possible, okay? This rascal right here, you can mount to your deer stands, to your deer blinds, or anything like that. Share the location with your friend via their app. Free download for their app, Android or iPhone, and they'll be able to find that hunting spot that you got tucked away back in there that hopefully nobody else will find, right? Another good use for it is put it on your bug out bag. Let's say you're, you're running around and this time you, you got to drop your bag and you got to get light and fast and get away for whatever reason somebody's tracking you or you just got to drop drop and come back later in the dark to get your pack later who knows all sorts of scenarios you can have this strapped onto or inside of your pack and be able to locate that pack later you throw your pack down by, by a tree and come back in the woods every tree looks the same right and you have trouble finding your pack this will help you find your pack so one cool feature is when you are locked onto it with your app you can hit the button and it'll flash for you help you find it in the dark. If you need to hear it, you can push that button right there and it'll blink and have an audible tone to it. So you got bars here, so it says I'm very close, obviously, right? So they claim up to 150 yards of range on this, which is pretty freaking good. Results may vary depending on the terrain, right? I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that's line of sight, I, I don't know. The testing that we've done, we've got all over 150 yards on it. Last time I tested it, um, I kind of put it down in a, in a bottom, and I want to say I didn't pick it up until it was like 140 something. So, I mean, it was close. But, uh, so you have that as well. Right here's your, your buttons to light it up or make it uh, light and sound. You got maps on here, so it shows your location. So while you're walking up to it, it'll actually, you know, you can, you can kind of see your terrain, which is cool. Details of it, you can name it, give it a lot long, <laughs> longitude and latitude. I've always had trouble with that word. The serial number, the whole nine, your battery, which I've had these batteries in here for months and the battery level's still good. Obviously, you know, unless you're using it, it's really not using any battery power. And then you got your share option here. So you can share your device. So you got a buddy, he downloads the app, you hit share, you share it to your buddy, he can get to your deer stand or find your backpack or, or whatever it may be. Just tons of different uses. I mean, if, if you lose stuff often, like if you lose your keys all the time, you can hang this on your key ring. It's a little big for that, I guess. But it's got lots of attachment points. You can use 
uh, Velcro, paracord, carabiners, whatever. Daniel actually used one of these when he went to the SHOT Show, he put this on his, uh, on his bag so he knew when his bag was fixing to come up out of the carousel at the airport, which was kind of cool. So that was a little test that he did that, that worked out rather well. I think the biggest use is, you know, marking things when hunting, Mark, marking stands, marking last blood, marking where your vehicle is when you go hiking, marking your vehicle when you're in a huge parking lot, you know, like parking lots are humongous and you don't remember what number and letter and all that crap in the parking lot you park nearby, you can leave this on your dash, find your car. Tons of cool uses with this, so long, of course, as you got your, uh, your cell phone so that you can run the app. But that is the breadcrumb location marker right there. And 50% off coupon if you want to buy another one, have two. Obviously, it's going to be great to have multiples if you have multiple locations. So now it's time for the Pro Plus. And this month in the Pro Plus box, we got something from Spyderco. About this time last year, Daniel and I went to Colorado and was actually able to go to Spyderco's headquarters there. And I'm telling you, you're talking about cool. So if you're ever around Golden, Colorado, or if you live in Golden, Colorado, or close enough to drive out there, be sure to go check out Spyderco. They got an awesome showroom there. Um, all sorts of knives from so far back, they don't even make them anymore, to rare knives, to their new models, the whole nine. There's a store there where you can buy them. I mean, really, really great people. Also, they have the manufacturing facility there, which is really cool. So being able to go in and actually see the knives being made, see the knives being sharpened, um, all the quality control. I mean, they've got a whole area that's nothing but quality control. Every knife goes through and they make sure that it's sharp, they make sure it functions properly, they make sure there's no irregularities on it. Everything that goes out is good. If it's not, they put it aside and they regroup. So really, really awesome place. If you ever get a chance to go there, go check them out. I think they actually sometimes do tours, I don't know. Um, they obviously gave us a tour while we were there. So us being there and the, and the treatment that they gave us really made us appreciate the brand even more. Spider Co is very concerned about their quality control and the way that they make their knives and everything there is like tip top shape. I mean, it's just, it's so, so cool to be able to go there and talk with them face to face. While we were there, we were working on upcoming boxes. Well, here's one of them. <laughs> so we got the Spider Co Persistence right here. It's a really cool knife. Let me show it to you. Well, there it is. If you do not have a Spider Co in your knife collection, now you got one. Everybody should have a Spider Co in their knife collection. Of course, it's got the Spider Co iconic little thumb hole right there for you to open up your knife. First thing that comes to mind to me is it's just it's quality. It's it's a Spider Co knife. It's I mean it's going to perform. It's going to be rugged. It's going to be square. It's going to be straight. It's gonna be sharp. Oh yeah, she sharp. Look at that, that's a pretty knife. So we've got a full flat grind. We've got G10 scales right here. You got an ambidextrous clip. You, you can move it down here or you can move it to the other side on each. So fully able to customize where your clip goes. Liner lock here with steel liners. So it's very rigid. You can't flex this. Really at all? Holy crap, usually I can flex any knife. If I did, I can barely see it. What is it, 8CR 30MOV XXYZ W9 316.4 steel? 8CR 13MOV, maybe I got it right the first time before I started adding everything to it. What's also cool about Spyderco is customization. Go on Instagram and look look up Spyderco knives. You'll, you'll see so many different things that you've never seen before, and, and reason being is, they're highly customizable. So that's what's one thing that's really cool to me about the Spider Co knife. If you're into the EDC game, you can completely transform this into whatever you want, however you want it to look. Scales, different clips, for instance, is like clips. You can get all sorts of different types of clips. If you want to change the clip, you can change the clip. You can change your scales, change your clip, completely transform the knife. Right here is an insert that can go inside your liner right here, so you can put that in there. 
This one right here actually glows in the dark. This is the exact same knife, okay? And we've got different scales for it. Changed out the scales. So we've got these really cool scales right here. And we changed out the clip. It's got a cool spider on it right there. So we've got a completely different clip. And we added the liner on the inside. This one right here will glow blue. Completely different look, right? That is one thing that I freaking love about these Spyderco knives. So this is a smaller version of the Tenacious, the Spyderco Tenacious. Um, comes in at 6.9 inches overall. I mean, it's a freaking Spyderco. And it's been a while since we've sent a Spyderco. Also, we got a first release to go with it, okay? Not available anywhere else yet, a Spyderco mat. All right, you saw it here first, folks. Just the first place ever to have this mat. On the front there, you got the little spiders all around right here. You got the Spider Co logo right here. And then this hole right here, which is the iconic opening or thumb hole of Spider Co. So what's cool about this mat is you can display your Spider Co knives on there if you want to. If you got plenty of them, display any of your knives on there. But if you're working on your knives, you're doing maintenance, cleaning your knives, changing scales, changing the different parts out. You got some little screws. You can put your screws right here in the hole area so they don't roll off the table. And you can use this mat right here as a work surface for your spider coat knives. So that's a first release. Like I said, first time that's ever been seen on the market through BattleBox with your spider coat persistence. Yeehaw. I really like that clip. It's nice. It's titanium. So that's mission 61 of Battle Box, folks. So you got a set of Calcutta glasses with a retainer right here, some tech new that I'm telling you, that's the best stuff there is out there. I've tried them all. We've got this nice box right here, assortment box, so that you can make any kind of kit out of it that you want. The Lamson Ulu, freaking awesome blade right there. We've got the breadcrumb, which is really cool. And also we've got the 50% uh, off coupon with that so that you can buy more, because I really think at, at least have two of them, right? And then we've got the Spider Co. Persistence right here, this one here on your right, my left. Um, fully customizable, awesome Spider Co. knife right there, the Persistence. Also, in this month's box, we got some coupons right here. Often, we always have coupons in the box, and oftentimes I don't say anything about them, um, but the Ulu, knife right here. It's got a coupon code that you can use, but I found on their website a little while ago, we were taking a break. They actually make a leather sheath that's really freaking cool for that uh, Ulu knife right there. So I'm definitely going to use my code and order me a leather sheath for that bad boy right there. I think that will make it even that much cooler. And the Technu, I'm telling you, they make big bottles of the Technu, like great big ones. If it works for you, which I know it will if you get poison ivy, get you the big bottle and use your coupon code. And you might win a Toyota pickup truck to haul that bottle in, you know, because, I mean, they got big bottles, man. You, that's good stuff. Just bathe your whole body down in it right there. And let's not forget the mat right here. First release, Spider Co. EDC mat, cleaning mat, knife mat, whatever you want to call it. Great mat right here. It's got Spider Co. all over it. All their, their little spider logos, the whole nine. So, and it's, the, of course, their nice red color. That's synonymous with Spider Coast. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Please be sure to check us out at BattleBox.com, B-A-T-T-L-B-O-X.com. You can find out everything there is to know about BattleBox. Frequently asked questions, the whole nines. If you need to talk to somebody in customer service, you can chat with them right there on the website. And I'm just going to leave you with this. Hygiene, folks. Hygiene is what's going to help you out with this coronavirus. Don't be freaking out like everybody else is out there. I have complete confidence that if you are a BattleBox subscriber, you understand the importance of prepping. I mean, that's what we do, right? Okay. Some of this stuff you might not use right away. Some of this stuff might sit on your shelf in your closet for a little while. But when the time comes that you need it, you got it. There's people freaking out right now, running all over creation, trying to get what they need to protect them or to help them out or be prepped for this whole virus thing going on, okay? So everybody laughs at the prepper until it's time to be prepped, right? Please, wash your hands. Keep your hands out of your face. And we'll see you next month with Mission 62. Oh, there's three blades next month.
three. Do it, do it, right? Get a little carried away. Steve! Clean this up. <laughs> <laughs>